Good morning and welcome to your first lesson which will be posted online. We have a little bit of uh, other assignments to finish for the previous two units but we can only do that once we are back in school. So if you look at the top left hand corner, this is fitness testing. This is the next unit we're moving on to and I did set you a piece of work last week which was the beginning of this unit. So if you did that then what that was about was uh, different fitness tests, what components of fitness those are testing, how to run those tests to make them valid and reliable. And that's really important you do have that information because you will need that for the assignments when we come to them. Now, what this one's doing is it's moving on to health screening and monitoring tests. So if you go to the gym or you used to work in the leisure centre, you're probably quite aware that no client could start using that until they've had a one-to-one -one consultation with uh, someone that works there and is trained in doing these. Now, what we're really looking at is what a health screen is and looking at some of the monitoring tests. Okay, so we're looking at what it is, why it's important, and how to conduct a consultation. Now, this is the assessment criteria for the assignment. Now, like I say, we are not doing the assignment, but all the work we'll do in the next couple of weeks will build up to this. So when we back in school, you will be able to do your assignment really, really clearly. Now, it's important that you do today's work, or this week's work, which are set, because it will lead on to doing the distinction part of this later on. If you don't do this part well, then it is gonna make it more difficult for you to hit that distinction criteria later. So if we're looking at P2 there, you need to prepare an appropriate health screening questionnaire. We're gonna look at that in a second. Next part, P3, is devising and use appropriate health screening procedures. So the idea is that you're gonna to need to do these with two different clients. So one is probably quite sort of a healthy, active kind of client, and a contrasting one will be someone who's perhaps not so active, might have underlying medical issues, uh, not so keen to take part, but they know they have to for their own health. And then for P4, M2, D1, you are looking at uh, devising or using four different tests with, for those clients and then interpreting the information that you gain from that. Again, we're looking at that in a second and then being able to write them a letter about what exercises they should do and how to improve their health. Now, this is an online consultation. It is an Australian one. I'm not gonna lie to you, it is cheesy, but it is important that you understand what a health screening questionnaire would look like. Welcome to the gym. Thank you. And um, before we get started with your exercise program, we're going to go through our adult pre exercise screening tool to see if you have any medical conditions that will affect your program. Okay. Okay. So basically, just answer the questions as we go through as a yes or a no, and if needs be, I'll ask more information. No worries. Okay. Um, your name? Helen. Thank you. And your date of birth? 11th of the 3rd. Yeah. 1982. Great. So, we'll just begin with the questions, like I said, a yes or no answer. So has your doctor ever told you that you have a heart condition or have you ever suffered a stroke? No. Do you ever experience unexplained pains in your chest at rest or during physical activity or exercise? No. Do you ever feel faint or have spells of dizziness during physical activity or exercise that causes you to lose balance? No. Have you had an asthma attack requiring immediate medical attention at any time over the last 12 months? Um, yes, I have. Okay. So how long ago was that? Uh, about three months ago. Did you have to go to your doctor or did you go? Um, I actually went to hospital for my asthma. My asthma. Okay. And I treated you there and has it been since? I haven't had a problem since, no. Okay. If you have had diabetes type 1 or 2, have you had trouble controlling your blood sugar? I don't have diabetes. Okay. Do you have any diagnosed muscle, bone or joint problems that you have been told could be made worse by participating in physical activity? No. Okay. And do you have any other medical conditions that make it dangerous for you to participate in physical activity? No. No. Well, hopefully, great. Um, it says here that if you answer yes to any of the questions, you need to see your GP before getting started on an exercise program. Oh, okay. So, 
we'll get a clearance from your GP before you start your program, and I'm sure that he'll give you a clearance. But um, we'll check in with him. And what I need you to do is just sign off here, saying that everything that you've answered has been to the best of your knowledge. Thank you. There you go. So we'll just get the asthma check before we start the program, and um, like I said, yeah, we'll, we'll get going as soon as possible. Okay, we'll do that. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Now, like I say, cheesy, but he gained a lot of information from that, which he can then use once he's been to the GP and come back to support a health program or a fitness program, depending on your client. Now, you will need to conduct four tests with your client. I've got a list here of five. You pick the ones which you are most comfortable or feel would be best supportive of your client. So if we look first of all at the heart rate, it's very quick and easy to take but it will tell us things like their current fitness level. Now for that, you will need a resting heart rate. Now we've taken these in the past, and you can see there from the side that uh, if you're male or female, there's very slight variations within that. But if you have a resting uh, heart rate from a client, it can tell you where they possibly are on that scale. And that would be an indication of how efficient the heart is, how big, how strong it is, how much blood it can pump out per beat. So actually, if the beats are lower, should, in effect, be a healthier, more efficient heart. So if you take me, I'm in this uh, 36 category here. If I had a resting pulse between 50 and 56, that would be an indication that I'm probably doing a lot of exercise. The heart is big and strong, pumping blood, a lot of blood per beat. So that stroke volume is high. If we look lower down, if I was to have a heart rate of 80 degrees, possibly higher, that's probably an indication that I'm not doing a lot. The heart is having to beat really, really frequently and putting it under a lot of strain. So you'll be able to tell a lot of information from that. Now, once you've written your client's program, which is a bit further down the line, it will also be a, a way of indicating or monitoring how hard they're working. Now, what you don't need to do is sit there and uh, record their heart rate, because actually, if you do one of the tests at the blood pressure, it will also calculate it for you. So if you remember using these, it will give us the systolic and the diastolic blood pressure, which I'll speak about in a second, but it will also just give you the pulse at the bottom. So you don't want to do it twice, okay? So I do recommend using the blood pressure monitors. So it will give you the heart rate, that can be one test, and the blood pressure, that can be your second one. Now we've got two numbers here for blood pressure, systolic and diastolic. So a systolic, will refer to the higher pressure when the heart is contracting. So you remember, the heart contracts, it forces blood out, it goes through the arteries, the pressure within those arteries goes up. And that is the higher number. Diastolic refers to the lower pressure. So there's still pressure within those arteries between heartbeats, but it is lower. So the heart contracts, it forces out the blood, pressure goes up. Between each beat, it's uh, a little bit lower. Now, you can see here that Really, you want to be looking between 120 over 180. Okay, that's really where they need to be, that green kind of area. Sometimes when we've taken these tests, they are a little bit higher. And some of you have been getting sort of 130 to 140. It is really important when you conduct these tests that it is at rest. If you think that when we did these, you've walked from the sixth form block, you've gone up two flights of stairs. Now, actually, flights of stairs are going to send your heart rate up because it's can be difficult and actually you're not fully at rest so it is important to take note of that that when you do this with a client you are fully aware that they are resting that they have a good rest from wherever they've come so you can get a resting heart rate and a resting blood pressure okay so they're the first two tests you could also do a peak flow now peak flow will uh, record how efficient and effective the lungs are so the respiratory system this is possibly a good one to do once you've done the cardiovascular, you're also doing the respiratory. Now the way this works is this is a peak flow monitor here. You've got a white tube that goes in. You need to take a, that out and put a fresh one in for the client so you're not transmitting germs. Okay, so they always have a fresh one that gets thrown away once it's been used. They take a big inhalation, so a big deep breath. They seal their lips around the plate and they all force out everything they can from the lungs really, really fast and powerfully. And what will happen is this little red 
indicator here will shoot up the line and it will measure. Now you might want to do that two or three times and take possibly the best um, that they, they blow within those times. Now if they are a female, you're using this chart, and a male, they'll use this chart. And you'll take their height and then your uh, age and then you'll see where they fill on the chart. Okay, so that could be another good one though to do. Waist to hip, um, you're now looking at measuring, as it says, the circumference around their waist and the circumference around their hips. Now the waist uh, is really the stomach, so you've got there a lot of fat, a lot of muscle, so that measurement could, if they're quite fit and healthy, could be quite low. If they are particularly overweight, a little bit larger, that waist is going to be a bit bigger and that is going to change the outcome obviously. The hip is around where obviously where the hips are, that pelvic girdle, so that is bone. So you're going to take those two measurements and then what you look to do is take a waist measurement, divide it by the height measurement and then you'll come out with uh, a result. But what does that result mean? So if we take 76 centimetres as the waist, the hips is a larger one, um, so the, the uh, actually, this is quite a slim kind of person. You're going to come out with 0.78. And then if you look at the charts for a female, that will put them in that good area. So that will be obviously very healthy. For a male, well, that's actually going to be an excellent level. But you could see if you flip that around, and actually the hips are 97. But actually, if this comes out at, say, 95, you're going to be looking at this high risk area. Okay, so things like being overweight, okay, the pressure that's going to start to put on the cardiovascular system, the joints, uh, and this could indicate what kind of program you need to write based on this information, i.e. something that's not going to be too exerted if they're having cardiovascular trouble or movement trouble, joint trouble, if they've got joint issues, then that would be something to consider so you're not chucking in things like squats when they can't move their knees so effectively. The final one, this is quite crude, you would have seen this before, the body mass index. So what you're looking to do is take their height, so if we take my height, I sit there, 5'11", and their weight, okay, so you've got the, the pounds on one side, the kilos on the other side. I know mine by kilos, so if I can get the indicator, so I'm 5'11", I need to go up here to 88 kilos, so that puts me about there, okay, so it's indicating that I am slightly overweight. Like I said, this is quite crude. Now, if you had someone of my height who was a bodybuilder, they could be perhaps nudging at 100 kilos. That could put them up here, obese. Okay. So while I say it's quite crude, you've got to take it with a bit of a pinch of salt because muscle is three times heavier than fat. So you'd be able to learn a lot from looking at the client, but you might still do some of these tests to indicate where they are or find out where they are on these charts. So this is another one that you could do. You would need to measure their height and know their weight. You'd have to weigh them as well, unless they could relay, relay that information. So based on what we've looked at, the, the video and the information I've given you, what you need to do for this week is produce a health screening questionnaire. This is really important because if you don't have this or it's not in depth, then you're not going to have enough information when it comes to writing your two clients a letter each about what you've screened, what you've found, what program you'd recommend, and how you would recommend they improve. Now we'll look at that later on, but you need to get a really good health screening questionnaire. So first of all, you need to make sure it includes personal details. You need to know things like name, obviously, but also uh, things like uh, how to contact them. So you have to put that into a letter. Secondly, you need to look at exercise details. What do they currently do? Do they do anything? But also, what do they enjoy and what do they not enjoy? It's no good finding out that your client doesn't like running and then you set a program of running. That's going to be contradicted. Okay, so you need to find out a little bit about what they do and what they like, dislike. You need to find out a bit more about their lifestyle. So are they drinking alcohol? Are they smoking? What kind of diet do they have? Is that five uh, fruit and veg a day? Are they drinking enough water? Sleep, sleep's important. You should be aiming for about eight hours a day so that your brain can recover from a hard day's work. And what about 
work what kind of work do they do are they doing night shifts are they doing long day shifts are they uh, strenuous work which could make them tired for some sort of exercise program and are they a school teacher teaching year 12 BTEC students well that could be quite stressful and that might have an effect on their health really important same from the video you need to look at their medical history this could be done as a tick box like the gent did on the video and then if there's a yes to a particular condition, he might ask, or you might ask a little bit more. You also need to try and find out what they want to achieve through these programs. Okay, are they looking to lose weight, or are they actually training for something specific, like a marathon, for example? Okay, so that is the task that you'll need to do. A health screen questionnaire. You can find information about these online but you cannot copy and paste these. You need to produce your own. Use them as a guide. Take out things you don't need. You don't need to ask if they're male or female because you can see that when you sit down with them. But you need to use those as a guide. Things you might not have thought about could be useful in like things like the medical history. So your task this week is to create a health screening questionnaire. You are more than welcome to email that to me um, and I'll be able to give you some feedback on that. So this week's task is set. Have a good day.